another episode of the Our Rise podcast. Today we have Gail, who is an internationally recognised motivational virtual and live speaker, certified through the National Speaker Association. So Gail, do you want to introduce yourself in a bit more detail? Yeah, I'm, as you just said, I'm a speaker, motivational speaker and author. I've written a book, Soaring into Greatness, A Blind Woman's Vision to Live Her Dreams and Fly. Let's see, done lots of podcasts. I've um, I sung, I've sung in two operas. I've, see my other highlights. I've done, um, I've built my own Habitat for Humanity house. And, oh, I was Miss Colorado Senior America and fourth in the country of the United States. And then last year, before the pandemic, I had the fun of climbing the Sydney Harbor Bridge in Australia, so. Wow, very, you've been a very busy woman, I'm guessing. Yeah, here and there. <laughs> I just keep putting one foot forward. <laughs> oh, definitely, definitely. Oh, and I've had six C and I dogs. Oh wow, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that's crazy to think you do it quite a lot, and um, you're a person who is advocating for blind women and for blind people overall. Because, um, can you explain to the audience what you have in specific? What, what I have in specific? What I've done to every. You know, I, I believe blindsided, whatever package we come in, that we all have the ability to live an unstoppable, unforgettable, unbelievable life. And it's just a matter of how we choose to see the world. And I, I basically believe if you change your, the way you see, the, you change your mindset, you can change the way you live. Perfect. So, so exactly. I completely agree with you. Like, even for you might have something, for example, I have cerebral palsy, mm-hmm. which is a physical condition that affects my bottom, my limbs, basically. And that doesn't stop me from doing what I'm doing. Like, right. right now, I'm literally having this podcast dedicated to literal amazing people who are doing their best, despite maybe having something that's due to your body or due to your psychological mm-hmm. matters but still making sure that you are still living a good life so firstly I want to ask um what medical condition do you have that affects your day-to-day life yeah being totally blind okay on um, both sides on your eye yeah yeah I have prosthetics so no oh. sight for me <laughs> wow that's crazy yeah. and how yeah. does how does that allow you to do the things that you want to do? How does it allow me? Um, you know, uh, yeah, you can either let your disability or like you say, the thing that's going on with your body stop you or empower you. And I've always chosen pretty much, I mean, we all have blind or sighted or cerebral palsy or whatever. We all have moments when we go, oh my God, you know, uh, and it's, it's some days there are, there are harder days than other days and there is discrimination and there is stuff out there. But, you know, I, I guess in a big picture, I believe in following my heart and doing whatever that says to do. So if I wanted to go sing an opera, I go sing an opera. And if I want to build a house, I go do that. And if I want to write a book, I just go do that. And I just keep on doing what my heart tells me to do in any given moment. And I just go do it. I love that. I love that mindset, especially <laughs> like even for you might have something that might, that people say that it's going to like pause your life or whatever. You don't let that happen. You just do whatever you feel like. So in a big picture. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In the big yeah. picture. I mean, there's those little moments that, you know, if I run into a wall one more time, I go, God, if I just, why, run, if I just run, but that, you know, it's a great metaphor for life. How do you choose to run into that wall? Do I, do I, do I hit it? And some days I do. It's like, what are you doing in my way? <laughs> and then sometimes you just, I just tap it and go, yeah, another wall, you know, uh, and how do I go around that wall? And that can work psychologically or physically, you know, how oh, we yeah. handle the walls in life. Oh, definitely, definitely. I completely agree with you. Um, You said that you have like two masters, which is obviously in voice and in psychology. Mm -hmm. Why did you decide to go for both of them instead of just doing one of those paths? Why did you decide to do two different degrees? Well, I did them at two different times. So I did do one path. The one path was music first. I did, I 
got a master's in voice and thinking that I was, my passion mm -hmm. was probably still is, was to be a concert opera singer. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I just, I loved the voice teacher and the way to be around her was to get a master's. And so I did. And then later when that wasn't, I wasn't seeming to make my living that way. Um, and there's discrimination. It was before ADA came around. And so, uh, and I didn't know to fight for myself and to stand up for my rights and any of that. So I, I said, well, what else can I do with myself? And I went, well, you know, I'm blind. Why not go help other blind people? Of course, I think I've helped more people that are, that, that don't have disabilities. Who knows who I've helped? But I, I decided to go get the master's just to, um, to empower others. And, and, and of course, in doing so, I totally helped myself get from the victim yeah. to the creator of my life. So, yeah. Oh, definitely. Like, I agree that sometimes I agree, like, if you want to do something that you're passionate in, definitely go for it. Like, for me, especially, like, um, I'm, I'm only 20 at the moment. And what's mm -hmm. happened throughout my life, I was born with cerebral palsies had cancer at the age of 17, mm. got over that when I was 18. Um, and then I wanted to first initially go into medicine because that's the path that I wanted to go into. But mm -hmm. then I quickly realised that's not really what I really want to do because, mm. to be honest, I was like, I know I have a disability, but why would I help other people if I'm not capable to do that so I decided to divert my mindset into business and now I have my own disability based business I have my poor classes and I'm still a student doing business as well so it's all those things all at once mm -hmm. and it's not let the, my disability is not letting me stop what I'm doing and that's what the message of my podcast is is whatever you want to do do it mm -hmm. no matter Absolutely. what yeah, and it's like you had to, it sounds like, to face your reality a little bit. Like, you know, I, I you know, now they're getting Tesla, so maybe I can drive a car. But probably, you know, not being a, I probably won't be an astronaut. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. my brain's not wired that way. So why go do something you're not wired to do, you know? And maybe you're supposed to be doing this thing at this point in your life. So go do oh, it. for sure, for sure. Until the next thing comes into your head and you go, Oh, I guess I'll go do that now. Mm -hmm, definitely, definitely. And I think, like, to be able to live, like, an unstoppable life, you should have the mindset that you're not disabled, that nothing can't stop you from what you're doing. Like, for me, right. I think in my mindset, okay, I don't have cerebral palsies. What can I do? Like, mm -hmm. for a day, for a day, if I don't have a disability, what would I do with my life? Do that when I was, like... um when I was Miss Colorado Senior America, they would they would put on me their limitation, like, well, you can't climb on this platform, so we're going to have you do this. And I go, wait a minute, what's everybody else doing? Mm -hmm. Tell me that. Well, they're climbing on this platform, then they're getting a picture taken. I said, okay, how can I do that and still have my dog and still have the person, you know, so we figured it out. It's like, I never want to do things, let me choose how I choose to do it. And there's always a way around it because I didn't want to be uh, a blind person first and then like Miss Colorado second or, or the yeah, yeah, author, yeah. you know, I wanted to be the person first and then, oh yeah, by the way. And I had my dog up there on stage with me and I, and I wanted them to see that this is a part of my package, mm -hmm. but it's not my total package. Oh, for sure. Like, um, yeah. So you may be going into obviously different career paths in life, but one of the things that I've learned is whatever you're doing, don't let that stop you for sure. Think about the pathways that you want to go into definitely would like live out your dreams and passions for sure. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. one of my next questions is with your Miss Colorado, um, tell me a bit more about that. What was the experience like? It was Initially, I did it to inspire people. And then I was fourth in the, when I got to the nationals, I was fourth in the country. So, um, so I did it to inspire people. I, I knew I had the voice and the talent, that part, but I had to really work hard to, um, 
be the same as everybody else. I, as I said a second ago, you know, I didn't want to be the blind Miss America. You know, I wanted to be the, the or Miss Colorado. I wanted to be the Miss Colorado that, that just happened to be blind. So I had to work really, really, really hard to be so they could see me as that. Because most people face it when they see anybody with any disability, they're going to see that disability first and they're going to put their expectations and limitations on that. And I don't want that. So I have to hold myself up to higher expectations and, and educate people to hold me up to those higher expectations in order to, to put that out to the world. So I, I worked really hard. I loved doing it. And the whole thing, my whole thing, no matter what I'm doing, is to inspire others to, to live those dreams. And so um, I worked hard. We had a talent portion. There was an um, evening gown portion. There was a philosophy portion. And, oh, I interviewed the judge. And so I won. I beat uh, 10 other people in, in Colorado. And then when I went to nationals, I, I was fourth. So I beat out 29 mm -hmm. other people who had sight. And... Uh, we come forth so that was pretty cool That's crazy. it was fun it was a blast yeah definitely and I think you should have learned something from that that no matter what you have if you're sighted or not you could still do something you could still have a reputation for yourself you could still feel beautiful on the inside as well it's absolutely not and and their whole model because it was miss it was a senior pageant so their whole model was um I think it was elegance, you know, age of elegance. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. And I think they were going to change it to the age of empowerment. But either way, we always should feel elegant and empowered inside. Oh, for sure. All about the inside. Yeah. Agree with you. I think in pageant, because I think one of my friends um, was going to do pageant, like doing, going into pageants, but she wanted to focus on her degree instead. Um, mm -hmm. She told me that, yeah, it can be rigorous from time to time. Like, oh, yeah. Look oh, like yeah. Totally rigorous. Totally but then it's also like you need to feel something on the inside to ask questions about your personality as well. And mm -hmm. that's something many people don't recognize. It's just, it's not just about how they look. It's just about how they like think about different opinions in society, for example, as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that's extremely important. And like you come in fourth place, that's crazy to think out of loads of people who must have applied and must have been in and stuff like that. Right. 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 Yeah. And it, what did you say a second ago? Um, totally from the inside out. And it was totally rigorous. And it was from morning to night, we had to be on the display. And, oh, I just want to say authentic. You know, I think you have to be who you are mm -hmm. at the end of the day. You know, we had to smile all the time. And we had to uh, dress really well, extraordinarily well. And we had to be on our, especially at nationals, on our guard about um, – what we said and who we said and how nice we were. For example, there was a woman that came up to me and she said, why are you singing the song that you sang? And I sang Nessun Dorma, which is normally a tenor aria. And I said, because I wanted to. And she says, well, that's, that's a, that's a tenor song. I go, I know. You know, so I had to handle her with grace, even though she was shooting me down, you know, and, um, funny thing she didn't get in the top five but then later the next year she entered and she sang my song and she got like se second runner up or something it's like oh I thought you were too good for that now you're doing my song <laughs> but you know it's how you present yourself too but it's not but being authentic you know I wasn't somebody I wasn't oh for sure I completely agree with you there um yeah I think because from what you built up over the time of being in the pageants like trying to build yourself as a person not just as a blind woman but mm -hmm. also as just a woman itself and every woman should be made beautiful no matter what on the inside and the outside right, right. yeah um yeah. so all the live speaking and motivational speaking how did that come along you know I don't Exactly. Remember, I you know I've always performed, so the singing part of me, I've I've done that my whole life practically, and I've always had that passion. So I think it probably started initially, probably going to schools and doing little sing-alongs with kids and talking to them about being blind and having seen eye mm -hmm. dogs and educating them on on that, and then somehow it evolved to 
going to a university and doing a little education around blindness. So I, I did that. And then my, one of my friends said, why don't you join Toastmasters and, and learn how to speak? And I went, okay. So we had a blast doing that. And I think it just sort of evolved from there, like performing more in senior center places. And, and of course, then I'd start talking about my disability because that's what they all want to hear about. So I, I do that. And then it just sort of branched out from there, Lions Clubs and conventions and disabilities and what whoever wants me, I'm there to talk to them, inspire them. Oh, definitely. Yeah, that sounds really inspirational. Just like, sort of evolved, you know. Yeah, just trying to bring your story of how you lived as a blind woman and how that came around. And then many people are getting inspired and that's how you build your platform, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just, it just sort of... Like I said, you know, I followed my passion no matter what that is. And, and, and part of me is a ham. Part of me likes to be on stage and, and yeah. get that... Uh, maybe it's getting approval from other people and it's it's one way when they laugh and when they when I hear them I know that oh I'm connecting you know kind of a thing so it's it's kind of fun from that aspect it and, and in some ways it's tricky because I it's like I can't see their facial expressions and are they nodding their heads what are you doing out there so then I had to make jokes make interact with them and I so I do it so I this is kind of funny. I've never done this on Zoom. So I usually do the wave, kind of like, oh, no, let's see. How, how do I do it? Let me think. Oh, I say, oh, do you know how you clap for deaf people? And I do this. <laughs> I did a, did a wave. And I say, well, how do you clap for blind people? And then they go, uh, like, they have no idea. And I finally yeah. go, you know, <laughs> yeah, clap. <laughs> yeah. You know, I try, try to break. And then I say, you know, if you're going to nod your head, make sure you do it this way. But make sure you go this way, too. Because, you know, you want to balance your neck out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I try to make little jokes. And I just say, you know, you got to you gotta do some kind of audible sounds for me because I'm not going to see you. And then about halfway through, they'll, they'll forget. Then I go, are you nodding your head again? And then they go, oh, yeah. <laughs> I said, stop that. <laughs> oh, so wow. I, try to, I try to lighten them up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I love how you like use the whole signals and the whole like clap motion like that, like the clap yeah. motion just to show and like different signals that they would understand what a blind person would hear uh -huh. and what blind person would communicate with because it's so different to what a normal person, normal person with deaf is because they can't see the action. Right. You lot right. can't see. So it's more like you rely on sound so much. And that's something right. that's crazy to me. I wear yeah. glasses. I'm just taking off my glasses itself. I can't see what's going on. Um, <laughs> I'm just, it's very blurry at the moment. So I'm wearing very intense glasses just to be able to see. And we've wow. been totally blind. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's People have a hard time imagining that. And somebody just the other day told me about how they did some example maybe in college or somewhere that they mm -hmm. had to be blind and I think that the facilitator made them walk around school with closing their eyes or maybe they had something over their eyes or something and I said did you hold on to people and they go no I said well that's just stupid I mean no blind person is going to be in a strange environment and well you shouldn't be anyway and not have some tool to guide you like a person or a cane or a dog we just don't do that i mean unless you want to uh, impel yourself so for the teacher to do that when i have done demonstrations like that and for people i i might blindfold them but i give them i give them, you know i did do that once i i didn't i, I had them come into the classroom about <laughs> <laughs> without any tools but normally i i put them in pairs and i'd have one person be the guide and one person be the, yeah. the blind person and then switch you know and then talk about what it was like you know yeah yeah definitely and it's just bringing more awareness into the blind community because there's so many things that people could be doing just to help you like just to either communicate or even live live in general and Definitely, like, you're actually one of the first blind people on my show, actually. And it's crazy. Yay! Yay! Um, <laughs> and I'm hoping to bring a lot more who could speak about their experience, too. But I'm just saying that even for you have something that may impact your whole life, does not let Absolutely. you stop. 
So yeah, you can't, I'm going to bring yeah. you close to this podcast. And one more question I wanted to ask is what advice would you give to anyone who would live an unstoppable, unforgettable and unbelievable life? But if one of my sayings is I have like, I call it like the seven senses. So I say you have to see your vision, listen to your inner voice, speak your truth, follow your heart, reach out and serve others, step forward and, and boldly into your life, tune into intuition and then live a life of greatness. You know, if you follow your senses, you'll follow your dreams. Oh, definitely. I that was good. That was good. Oh, I have to remember that one. <laughs> Yay. Yay. <laughs> yeah, but thank you so much, Gail, for coming on and speaking about your whole experience. You're so welcome. My Yay. pleasure. Anytime. My pleasure to talk to you about it. And for anyone out here on YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. And if you're listening on this on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or any other platform, streaming platform just make sure you subscribe to the our right podcast and follow our social media which is movement fitness and nutrition so see you guys later bye bye